Puff Piece by John Safra. If I asked you to imagine the evilest, most morally corrupt company, the chances are you would be thinking of an oil company. Or Nestle, they literally murder babies. Yeah, I've, I've used the word literally correctly there. But Nestle aside, you're probably thinking of an oil company planting misinformation about climate change, lying, profiting at the expense of everybody else, lying, bribing politicians, telling the truth, in a way that is dishonest and lying. But there is an OG supervillain, somebody the oil companies look up to and idolize. And no, it's not Nestle. Do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I believe nicotine is not addictive, yes. I don't believe that nicotine is addictive. I believe nicotine is not addictive. I believe that nicotine is not addictive. I believe that nicotine is not addictive. And I too believe that nicotine is not addictive. Philip Morris and big tobacco. Before I begin discussing Puff Piece and this expose of Philip Morris and the tobacco industry that is secretly or maybe not so secretly trying to kill you, we need to quickly discuss the author, John Safran, not to be confused with Jonathan Safran Fora, who is a completely different author, because I doubt our international audience will be aware of who he is. Yes, Safran is an author. Puff Piece is his third book and his second work of non-fiction. It turns out, weirdly, that he wrote a murder mystery. But that's not what Safran is known for. Technically, he is an Australian journalist and possibly a borderline comedian. I say technically and borderline like he's not actually those things and I'm about to be really shady. But if I said journalist and comedian, you might think that those are separate endeavours and they're not. Safran is a journalist, but his real skill is being sarcastic. He is Australia's only celebrity sarcasmist. You might like to imagine two Louis Thoreau's and one James A. Caster had a baby due to some interesting advances in science and then due to some other interesting but completely unrelated advancements in science transported said baby back in time to the 70s and gave him to a sarcastic Jewish Australian family to raise. And yes, even though I used words like Jewish, Australian and Louis Thoreau, I did need to specify sarcastic. Safran's past journalistic highlights include getting a fatwa placed on Australia's most harmless TV personality and possible part-time teddy bear, Rove McManus, accidentally kicking a football over the border between Palestine and Israel and asking the border guards to please bring him his ball back. Safran was cursed by a voodoo priest in Haiti and then had a Catholic priest exercise him. And while this all seems to point to a healthy amount of shit fuckery in his journalism, he has also exposed attempts from anti-Semitic organisations to infiltrate anti-lockdown protesters. He produces serious works of journalism. No, no, let me rephrase that. He produces works of journalism that require you to take them seriously. He's a journalist who uses sarcasm, comedy and ridicule, often of himself, to illustrate his point. Safran is the sort of A-list Australian icon who could reasonably expect to walk to the corner shop and not be stopped, whose name alone is enough to sell this book. His radio gigs have not graduated from Triple J's and his documentaries are only played on SBS, yet his reliance on the public broadcaster could equally because he is cool and doesn't want to sell out or because the commercial stations don't have an interest in him. Actually, it's almost certainly both of those things. After all, Credible journalists who aren't taken seriously is exactly the opposite of who Sky News is hiring. If you want to waste a day, I really do recommend finding some copies of John Safran vs. God online and watching him road test various religions and meet his bestie, Catholic priest, Father Bob. A man so badass that he was excommunicated from the Catholic Church for selling their own property in order to raise money for the homeless and generally acts very seriously while Safran makes a complete tit of himself. John Safran is an unusual flavour, but his name is 100% of the reason I picked this book up. He always informs and entertains with sarcasm, and Puff Piece is no exception to this. This book is full of pieces of Safran, interviews with some of his best friends, such as Father Bob, a man who Safran describes as old, even for an old person. Safran's semi-retired accounting father, who has only one client, Safran himself, and 
comedian Leslie Jones, who Safran met while filming in the USA before Jones added him on MySpace. Their friendship consequently moved over to Facebook when MySpace closed. What Safran doesn't tell Jones is that the MySpace Safran that she befriended was a parody account and not actually him, and that he is paranoid that she prefers MySpace Safran to Facebook Safran. I've told you a lot about Safran, but with the exception of some clumsy hinting about Philip Morris and a substandard hook, I haven't told you a lot about this book, and that's a little bit because Saffron is a truly interesting human, and whatever lens he chooses to view the world through is almost immaterial. But before I start discussing the book, let's do a quick round of trivia. What is the ratio of deaths that are due to cancer, cardiovascular disease, and cigarettes? Cancer comes in at 10 million people a year, which is 18.75% of all deaths, and that is all forms of cancer. Cardiovascular disease is slightly higher at 10.7 million people, or 20% of all deaths, while cigarettes come in at 8 million people, or 15% of all deaths. But the thing about cigarettes is that it causes cancer. It causes cardiovascular disease. Cigarettes are still the leading killers of people in the world today. The IQOS is Philip Morris's vaping device, except that it's not a vaping device. It's, well, it's whatever Philip Morris wants to call it, depending on what suits him at the time, including a vaping device, something that they're adamant it definitely isn't. And the IQOS is banned in Australia amid the debate about whether it is harmful. Well, it definitely is harmful. Philip Morris claims that it isn't as dangerous as cigarettes and it helps people get off cigarettes. As you may have seen on the thumbnail of this video, it produces lower levels of 57 dangerous chemicals, making it the safe alternative. Except that Philip Morris didn't say that last bit. They didn't say it's the safe alternative. They said it's lower in 57 dangerous chemicals. We all just filled in the blank. Look, okay, of course Philip Morris is lying to us. You are clearly an intelligent viewer. You can clearly determine bias. You understand they're lying to us. You also already subscribe to this channel and have liked this video. You know, for example, that Ferrari doesn't say, we took out all the safety features so it would go faster, but you hit something, you die. They don't advertise like that. And Philip Morris isn't saying, I quas, it will still kill you, but indulge me. Imagine you're a pack a day smoker. You've tried quitting, but you can't. You know you're going to die of cigarettes. Your doctor has said you want to quit. You give it a shot. It's been two days. You feel the pressure to quit, the stress to quit. You're angsty. You're moody. You could really use a cigarette. And then you see an ad for the IQOS, lower in 57 dangerous chemicals, a safer alternative to cigarettes. Wouldn't that product just be perfect? But you might be thinking, but I'm not that stupid. And I'm telling you, if you're thinking that, you don't understand the power of wanting something. I recently got a sponsorship gig on this channel. And as soon as I made that video, I got an email from another company. Brilliant. Maybe I could make this channel make some actual money for me. Maybe I could make videos full time. So just download this video and watch it. Oh, it's a .ra file. Who doesn't host their videos somewhere like YouTube when doing this sort of thing? This is clearly a scam to infect my computer with some sort of credit card tracking Trojan or something. I say out loud as I double click on the file only to have my malware kick in and say Trojan found, we blocked it. You're a dickhead. The power of wanting something makes you take dumb chances. So yeah, I might have compared Philip Morris to a lady from whatever company .sk websites come from, a lady who is probably poor and scamming people in an attempt to get rich. But is it really the same? Because if I fall for the trick played by Abigail Wilson, who's representing Centrum in Slovakia, has played, she might be able to feed her family for a few extra meals this week or solve whatever sob story she has. And it comes at the expense of me cancelling a few credit cards, maybe losing a day's worth of wages. Well, Philip Morris is a company worth $150 billion. And if you fall for their scam, 
you die. And this is something that Saffron touches on, the apathy we have for big business and the crime they do. Okay, it's not actually crime. Well, not all the time anyway. Saffron does give them plenty of chance to illegally bribe him. But going back to the apathy, Saffron's discussion around race inequality and big business was nothing short of brilliant and very thought-provoking. If a black athlete gets offered a sponsorship from Nike, should he turn them down on account of their use of slavery? to make their shoes on account of their human rights abuse. And what if that black athlete was somehow blocked from signing for every NFL team since he took a stand against racism and became the figurehead of a black rights movement? Should we turn a blind eye to the human rights abuse because a black man who is so often exploited by the system has managed to come out on top and win? Saffron then brings up an anti-Nazi rally that he wanted to attend, but was subsequently told he was white and not welcome. A Jewish man being told he cannot protest the Nazis. I really love this. There is so much in bashing these two together. Saffron's rights to attend an anti-Nazi rally, Kaspernick's criticism. Both examples place responsibility at the feet of the man and ignore the organization. How did the human rights abuses of Nike get pushed on to Kaspernick? It's as absurd as blaming a Jew for the Nazis. But that's not all of it, because while we're squabbling over who can march, the Nazis are getting away with it. Nike are profiting off slaves. You're never really sure if Saffron is promoting communism or calling us lefties a bunch of hypocrites. It could very well be both. Because Saffron realises the situation is a lot messier than most of us do. And if it's messy, he's going to find the absurd and he's going to mock it. Ultimately, this is one of those books that takes what is a comparatively little issue and then shows you so much more about the world. I can't help but to compare this to Emma de Beery's excellent non-fiction book, Don't Touch My Hair, where she discusses black hair and uses that as a lens to discuss discrimination and race. It is truly surprising how black hair links in with all of these issues. Saffron might be discussing if a smoking device should be legal or illegal, a topic that should be, well, whatever. But not only does he suck race and religion right into it, but politics and language and the intersection of science, law and language. What actually is an aerosol? What is the difference between heat-related decomposition and burning? He also discusses the big question. Why are we no longer angry at big corporations anyway? And does adding bagels to fruit and smoothies make it a more business appropriate breakfast? I am never sure how to rate non-fiction books, especially as Saffron can't help but to artfully mock everything, including himself, along the journey. But this book taught me things, it provoked thought, it entertained, it made me laugh, and it never bored me. And I think this is the first work of non-fiction that I have read that has true rereadability to it. As in, I would read it cover to cover again instead of cherry picking segments. For that alone, I have to give it all five stars, a truly unique and entertaining piece of journalism. Another book that I thought was really unique was Hello Friend, We Missed You by Welsh novelist Richard Owen Roberts. So click here to see my review of that. Bye bye.